Hey everybody, it's me, Brian. Welcome, and today we're gonna learn about rounding. Let's go over our lesson goals for today. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to one, round decimals to a specific place, tenths, hundredths, etc., and two, round decimals to the nearest whole number. You see that we are focusing mostly on decimals here. A lot of problems that may continue on forever are going to have you round off to a specific place, and we're also going to go over what happens if a number continues and it doesn't tell you where to stop, most likely where you should stop your answer. All right, so key vocabulary, rounding. Rounding just makes numbers easier to work with. So this is only one type of estimation, however. So rounding is one of those options. Now, one of the ways to remember that is, is rounding is that what number is round? Zero. So the majority of times that you round numbers are going to end with zeros. Now be careful with decimals because when you do this, zeros after the decimal point may or may not be used depending on their place. So keep that in mind when we go over some of our answers today. Key point number one, some questions will require you to round without explicitly telling you to round. So for example, you may notice that a you have a decimal that keeps repeating, or you have decimals that continue on for a really long time and don't really seem to end, or if you keep going and the answer choices don't have the same number of decimals that you found, knowing which one to choose. Two, certain words will imply that the question will require you to round instead of telling you to find the exact answer. So making sure that you're paying attention and close attention to what the directions of those problems are. So you may see something that says about how many, round, estimate, tell me the answer to the nearest hundredth place, or round the decimal to the near to the second place value. So knowing what that means and how to figure that out is going to be important to cut off those answers. So we do have some rounding rules. So let's look at the problem in front of us. Round the following number to the nearest whole number, 35 and 895 thousandths. We're going to round this to the nearest whole number. Now, when you hear whole number, that's actually going to be the ones place. So it's always going to be to the left of the decimal point. So step one, underline the place value you're rounding to, like we just said, nearest whole number, it's the position directly to the left of the decimal point. If you need to go back and look at place value, feel free to go look and see where that comes from if you need further understanding about that. So to the, that is the five. So I'm gonna underline the place value I'm rounding to. We're gonna look one spot to the right. One spot to the right is gonna tell us if we're closer to moving up or if that number is better off staying the same. So I do see an eight. The rule is if you see a zero through four, the underlying digit that you're working with stays the same. Or if you see a five to nine, the underlying digit goes up one. Usually we say something like zero through four, hit the floor, five through nine, raise the line. So it's either going to go up or down. Thinking about phrases that help you in case you forget, always gonna be something that are really, really helpful. So we do see an eight, which tells the five that it's going to go up by one. What is one larger than five? Six. So that five turns into a six. Now anything to the right is going to turn to a zero. Anything to the left is going to stay the same. So that eight, the nine, the five are gonna to turn to zeros, which in this case just become placeholders so we can get rid of them. So our answer is just going to be 36, which also suits the question, whole number, whole number does not have decimals or fractions at all. So we have answered this question. So let's just jump in. Let's go over quickly some sample questions about what this rounding looks like. So again, something similar to what we just did. Round 453 and 456 thousandths to the nearest whole number. Following that same idea, we're going to underline the place value that we're rounding to. Whole numbers, so we want to go to the ones place, directly to the left of that decimal point. I'm going to look behind, and I see a 4. Remember, 0 through 4, hit the floor which means stay the same, five through nine, we're gonna raise the line or go up by one. I see a four, which means that that three is better off just staying the exact same. It's closer to staying the same, 453, than going up to 454. So that three stays a three. Any number to the left is going to stay the same. Any number to the right is just going to turn to zero. So we keep that four and the five the same to the left. And that four, five, six are going to turn to zero. 
those can drop because those are just becoming placeholders. Those are just adding to the number. They're not actually adding any value to the number. So we get 453. Now round 254 and 875,000 to the nearest hundreds place. Now generally, when you're doing a lot of these problems, one of the things to keep in mind is that most likely you're going to have to round to the second or third place value when you get into the decimals. Most problems are not going to have you continue going on to the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth place value. So generally, if you go to the third, fourth place value, you can round off your number and then call it a day. That is usually the case, but also pay attention to what the directions may say or what you see in your answer choices. So we're going to practice what rounding to that nearest hundredth place look like. So we're first are going to underline where the hundredth place is, which is that seven. We're then going to look one spot to the right. We see the five. That five will turn, will tell that seven to go up one to become an eight because zero through four hit the floor. Five through nine, we raise the line. So seven becomes an eight. Anything to the left of the eight or the underlined digits is going to stay the same. Anything to the right is going to turn to zero. But if we're at this side of the decimal, it can just disappear. So our final answer becomes 254 and 88 hundredths. Now this one might be a little trickier. So we round 312 and 997 to the nearest hundredth. And I guarantee that you're going to see problems like this either in real life or on your assessment. So we have this nine here that is in the hundredth place. Again, same rules. We look at the seven. The seven tells us to go up one, right? But what happens when a nine goes up by one? It becomes a 10. But this underlined digit only has room for one digit, but 10 is two digits. So what happens is we then carry over the additional one. So we leave the zero of the 10, and then we add one to the next place value. You can see if those next to each other actually look like the number 10. But if I look at that nine in the tenth place and I add one, huh, oops, that's also 10. So again, I have to carry that additional one. So that nine in the tenth place becomes a zero, and that one gets added on to the whole number. Luckily, one plus two is still a single digit number, so we can answer it. Now, if we look, we get left with that two becomes a three. So we would get left with 313 and the tenths place, the hundredths place, and the thousandths place would all be zeros. So those can actually go away since they're not adding any value to the number. So believe it or not, 312 and 997 thousandths to the nearest hundredth actually just becomes a whole number. Very specific case, but anytime you round a nine upwards, you're going to have to carry the one over to the next place value on the left side. Now, another way that you're going to see this is if you have a decimal. So for example, say you're doing a fraction problem, but it asks you to write your answer as a decimal. We're going to look at how that happens, what that looks like, and how to cut off a number when we see that it's happening. So say we have two thirds very common decimal to be seen, very common decimal to use. This really just means two divided by three. So say we start to do the division. We know we can't do two divided by three, so we put a decimal point down, we add some zeros, we do 20 divided by three, which is six, six times three is 18. Subtract, we get two. Bring down the zero, we notice that it's 20 again. 20 divided by three is six, six times three is 18. Subtract, we would get two, we see that the same thing is going on. So if we did this again, we'd end up with six. We see a pattern that sixes just keep continuing. So when this happens, we generally would take this number and round it off to the second place value or the hundredth place. So same thing, underline the six, look next door. It's of course another six since this is repeating, which tells that six to go up. So we have 0 0.67 or zero and 67 hundredths. If you notice that a decimal is repeating, you can stop when it starts to repeat or generally stop at the second or third place value. Again, just pay attention to directions or what the question specifically is asking for. Other than that, you are good to go. That's all from this end. It's your time to go practice. See you soon.